Everybody knows that organic traffic, the type of traffic that you get from Google search results, is one of the best traffic that can come to your blog or website. So how exactly can you get your blog post in Google search results, especially as a new blogger? Hello and welcome to a new blogging strategy video where I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about finding blog post ideas that are easy to rank for in Google, no matter if you have a low DA score or you're a brand new blogger. My name is Anna and I'm a blogging coach and strategist helping other bloggers increase their traffic and income. And if you're in here trying to increase your blog traffic, you're in the right place. So stick around until the end of this video. <laughs> blogger for about three years and I recently started a pet side blog testing the same strategies that I basically teach my students and from running these two blogging businesses I've learned that there are two secrets to successful blogging when it comes to picking your topics the first secret is that you want to write blog posts that people actually want to read that they're actively searching for and where do people go to search off topics? Google, of course. And the second secret is that you wanna write blog posts that you actually stand a chance ranking for. So even if you write blog topics that everybody's reading at the moment, but you're going for really competitive topics or keywords, you're probably not gonna end up in search results. But that doesn't mean that you can't get decent or really good organic traffic as a new blogger or as a blogger who just doesn't have a high DA score. And just in case you're new to the whole SEO and blogging world, a DA score stands for Domain Authority and it's an average jury score that keyword research tools calculate for your website or domain based on a variety of factors. Some of them include backlinks, how long you've had your blog for, how trusted your blog is, your page speed. There's so much that goes into it and Google doesn't actually disclose their actual score and what they think of you. But these keyword research tools usually do a pretty good job estimating that. A DA score can be from 1 to 100 and anything over a score of 60 is really reserved for really established websites. But as a blogger, you want to aspire to kind of grow your DA in time and reach at least 30 to 40. That being said, my pet blog that I had for just a little over a year has only a DA score of three. Pretty pathetic. It's still almost 90% of my monthly traffic at the moment and it's growing like crazy comes from Google search. So how did I achieve that? Well, simple. I invested in a good keyword research tool and I went after low competition keywords that I could actually stand a chance ranking for. And that's exactly what I want to teach you in today's video. How to strategically come up with blog post ideas that are not only just great topics that you personally are passionate about, but also topics that your audience searches for on Google and that you have a chance ranking. If you've been a blogger for a while and you think you've optimized for SEO but nothing is happening and the traffic you get from Google is just crickets, here are one of the potential reasons why that must be happening. Reason number one why you haven't ranked in Google yet is that you write about topics that nobody's searching for. You basically choose blog topics that you want to write about, that you're currently passionate about, and you think everybody else must love them. Your blog topic selection is mostly guesswork. Aww. You're not being strategic about it, you're just choosing to write articles that you want to write. And if you really want to turn your hobby blog into a business blog, you have to understand your content has to be more about your audience than it is about you. Reason number two why you haven't had much success with Google or SEO yet is because you probably go over keywords or topics that are super competitive in the Google space. In other words, it's going to take years to dethrone these competitors if you're ever going to get to a place where you could do that. So even if your content is great, and I'm talking outstanding, you're just not going to stand a chance because Google also looks at the website as a whole for context rather than just rewarding articles. Or perhaps the reason why you hadn't had much success with Google is for reason number three, and that is your keyword implementation just hasn't been great. In other words, maybe you chose the right topics, maybe you chose the right keywords, but then you didn't really include them in your blog post strategically. But until then, let me help you strategically brainstorm blog post ideas that will start generating organic traffic for you. This is how to find keyword ideas that are easy to rank for. So for the purpose of this video, I'm assuming you already have a blog niche in mind, which is the general topic or industry that you want to blog in, and also maybe your blog categories. This is how to brainstorm blog topic ideas for the rest of the year in just one setting. The first step is you need to invest in a good keyword resource tool. Like I said, you can't do guesswork and just pick topics that you want to write about. And a good keyword research tool takes away all that guesswork and actually helps you find topics that people search for. My favorite keyword research tool that's also super affordable is KeySearch. 
If you want to follow along with this tutorial and follow the exact steps that I personally use, make sure to sign up first. There's a link in the description or if not, you can go to theshiapros.com slash keysearch and don't forget to use the code ANNA20 with just one N for 20% off indefinitely. So whether you just decide to sign up to the monthly plan and give it a try or the annual plan, you will get 20% off including your following months or years. Trust me, I've been down the path of using free keyword research tool and trying to kind of guess my way into the best keywords and it just does not work. It's not effective, but don't take my word for it. If you want to learn exactly how I use KeySearch and what features they have that could be useful for you and your blogging strategy, follow along with this video. Also, if you find any of this helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Okay, so you have your keyword research tool and you're sitting down for your brainstorming session. The first thing you need is just a brainstorming sheet of sorts where you can pretty much dump all your ideas and kind of sort them out later. You could just use a free Google Doc, spreadsheet, or even a piece of paper, but I would recommend using some sort of digital tool where you can copy paste things and dump them quickly. And to make this even easier for you so you can get started right Away, I've actually created a template sheet that you can download and make your own in just two seconds. Again, the link for it is in the description, so make sure to go and check it out. But here's exactly what you're gonna see in it. Once you get the link to the sheet, all you have to do is click on File, Make a Copy, and save that as a new spreadsheet. Once you get here, ignore the difficulty scores just yet because they're just gonna confuse you until we get to that side of the video, but scroll down and you have a place to replace all your blog categories. If you don't have five blog categories, just fill out as many as you need or use any other ways to categorize your content that makes sense for you. And just to make keyword research a little easier to comprehend, I'm gonna use my pet blog as an example just so you can see what it's like to keyword research for content that doesn't have to do with online marketing. So I'm gonna go ahead and type a few categories in there, like product roundups, I do those quite a lot, dogs, etc. Honestly, you can't go wrong with this. Any way you wanna organize your content will make sense. And then you're off to your brainstorming session. All I need you to do for this part is literally just dedicate 20 to 30 minutes to this brainstorming session and you can go away from it with at least 20 to 30 blog post ideas that are easy to run for on Google. But we're gonna get started on a really easy step and you use Key Search brainstorming tool. So you can find this under keyword research, brainstorm. So what you can see here is that a simple search for best cat toys gave us a bunch more ideas that are a lot more specific. For example, best cat toys when you're gone or best cat toys for exercise or for older cats best cat toys exercise wheel for bored cats for indoor cats best cat toys without catnip best cat toys for blind cats honestly the list goes on and on but think about it what would be easier to rank for in google especially as a new blogger best cat toys which is the most competitive keyword ever or best cat toys for blind cats so i'm simply gonna move all the keywords that kind of spoke to me over there and what I want you to do is keep using the brainstorming tool with different initial searches. You could type something in like, what are cats? And then see what pops up. So what are cats allergic to? What are cats scared of? And so on. Obviously the more specific and good the initial search is, the better their recommendations are gonna be. So play around with it a couple of times, type in a few different things, and go back to your brainstorming sheet and paste in the ideas that speak to you. If it can be turned into a blog post and you know enough about it to write about it, then it's a good topic idea. Moving on to another way to do keyword research that is just a lot more set in stone than throwing out ideas. This is my favorite way to do keyword research and it's by basically seeing what my competitors are ranking for. And when I mean that, I really don't look at other bloggers as competition, but wouldn't you rather go with a tried and tested topic that you know other bloggers can rank for rather than try to come up with super original ideas? Because when it comes to blogging, here's the reality of it. You're never gonna come up with a blog topic or a blog post that nobody has ever written before. And if you do find something like that, it's probably a topic that nobody else wants to read. So what you can do is use one of my favorite key search features, and it's under competitive analysis, organic keywords. And here's how to use this feature. First of all, you mustn't put the URL of a competitor. So make a list of other bloggers that you know in your industry and then go searching for a couple of more. So one really easy way to get you started in that is to type in a couple of the ideas that you already have in your list. So if I go back to my list, let's say for example, best cat toys for blind cats, 
and I just pop it in Google. So let's say, for example, cat behavioralist. I'm going to copy that URL and pop it over in key search, letting the entire domain be the kind of source they pull keywords from. Before I show you what key search found for this competitor, keep in mind that when you're searching for other blogs on the same topic to put in through the same process, you ideally want to go for a blogs with a domain authority similar to yours or in the same range. So if you only have a domain authority of five, I would not look for competitors with a, a DA of over 20 because it's just very hard to match. And I'm also going to show you quickly how to do that, but I have a more detailed guide on it and explanation on DA scores and everything like that in the link below. So if you want to check out the domain authority of your competitors, so you can see if it's even worth putting them through this competitive analysis, you want to go to the same point of competitive analysis in URL metrics. And then you can input several URLs, one per line, for all the domains that you found. So I'm going to go with cat behavioralist and go back to Google and see what other blogs I can match up with. So literally, I will just copy these, put them in a new line and repeat the process. And then all you have to do is click search. Key search will then analyze these competitors and tell you where they are so you see if you can compare with them. So for example, it lets me know that the first blog that I was going to look for has a DA of 46. That as a new blogger is just very hard to compete with. I wouldn't necessarily prioritize the information from their website, but for example, the last blog that has only a DA of 24, I would think that any content that they're ranking for is pretty promising because if they ranked for topics in Google, that means you have a chance as well. Going back to the competitive analysis and the organic keywords bit, once you input their information there, this will spit out exactly what they're ranking for and in what position. Keep in mind that this position tab right here means the spot they are in Google search. So on the first page of Google, you have 10 results, right? Spot number one is a top search that shows up in there. I would personally look and go through this list up until position 10 or so. So if they're on the first page and I would kind of fight for that spot, but if a domain that has bigger authority than yours couldn't even make it to spot then, it's not really worth going for those key search unless you can massively improve on the content. So maybe they just didn't optimize enough, you never know, but usually I just stick through the results they have for position one through 10 and save any ideas to my list. After that, you want to repeat the process for further websites that you found, just going through the same kind of process, searching for the entire domain and going for a couple of the keywords that they shot for. Again, in this list of keywords, you see a lot of things that repeat themselves. And that's because you can rank for multiple keywords for one specific article. So you'll see the URL for the article at the end. If the URL is the same, I would not kind of paste the uh, 10 keywords for the same topic in the brainstorming list just because again for the purpose of this exercise we're looking for topic ideas rather than key search ideas for a specific topic so again any topic that i find interesting or relevant i'll move them back to my little list in here and you'll see that they have a bunch ranking number one and that only covers the first page you literally want to go through the following pages up until position 10 to make sure that you're doing plenty of research and again, you might find a bunch of ideas. Don't get too overwhelmed. That's exactly the point of this exercise. We want to do enough topic research so that you don't have to come back to key search for another couple of months because you have already so much content that you can write about. And if those weren't enough ideas, key search has another feature dedicated to keyword research and topic research called, of course, keyword research. So I started with something super simple like cat products. You'll see that here in the side, it shows other 700 keywords related to that. But again, I'm looking for very specific keywords. So like I was saying before, when you type in something so broad, if you try to rank for it, it'll be nearly impossible. What you see here in red outline in the numbers is a difficulty score. So how difficult would it be to rank for that? Anything with a score of over 35 or so, I would not even touch unless I had a DA of 35 plus. And then what you can do is just click on the score tab here and then click again. And this will organize all the ideas for related keywords under the easiest to rank for to the most difficult to rank for. So start with those. Those are such great topic ideas that you would have otherwise probably overlooked. So once again, any idea that speaks to you, you can move it over to your brainstorming list and add it to the list of articles that you would ideally like to write. And what you can do for this step is also color code it. So of course, anything under 20 has a very easy difficulty score and it's ideal, especially for new bloggers to target. 
Anything with a score of 20 to 30 is good. Anything with a score of over 30 is kind of difficult, including over 40s and over 50s, which is very competitive. If you're going through the list of keywords in Keysearch and you don't see a score attached to them, all you need to do is go and click on the check button next to it. And something else that I look for rather than just the score itself is this little beautiful table right next to it that shows who's currently ranking for it. So you will see there, they'll give you a couple of numbers and information about it. What I look at is the DA column. So as you know, that stands for domain authority and websites that are really established are going to be kind of impossible to knock off that list. Well, for something like Posh Cat Accessories, you will see that the top result is obviously Etsy. You're probably never going to outthrown them. We have about five or six different websites in here with a DA of under 30. So that looks very promising to me, especially if I have a new website or I just don't have a DA of over 30. So as a final step for your brainstorming session is to actually determine which of your ideas that you saved are easy or realistic to rank for. And there you go. This is how I use Key Search to do my brainstorming session when it comes to both of my blogs. And when I do stuff like that, I like to take an hour or more and do it all in bulk. So at the end of it, I like to have blog post ideas, especially ideas that are really easy to rank for. But my hope is that this video created a good foundation for you to get started with keyword research right away and to help you pick better blog post topics for your website. If it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you want to learn anything in particular, let me know in the comment section below because I am taking video requests.